Tiana Robert is my name, and I'm a 32-year-old housewife. 38-year-old Max, my spouse, has a strong emotional bond with his mother and a history of verbal abuse. Max, me, our 10-year-old son, and our 8-year-old daughter make up our family of four. I've been living with my in-laws since I got married, and my mother-in-law's erratic behavior has grown to be a big problem. Max only advises me to follow his mother's instructions when I voice my worries. My mother-in-law seems to treat me as though I'm her personal servant. She calls me as soon as she wakes up every morning and tells me to get her up. I wake up in the morning and help her out of bed, get her dressed, and then we head to the living room for breakfast. Despite her physical disability, she finds it difficult to walk in the morning, but in the afternoon, her mobility improves. After breakfast, my mother-in-law frequently insists on hot tea right away. I assure her I'll boil the water shortly, but she gets mad at me for not doing it earlier, even though she told me it should be boiled after she finished eating. It appears that she enjoys causing me pain. Despite receiving medical treatment, my mother-in-law's walking difficulties have only been worse in the last five years, even though Max and I have been married for ten years. She has rejected my suggestion that we go for walks together as part of her recovery. Before she started having problems with her walking, we used to get along great and even go shopping and cook together. She now treats me like a servant and is verbally abusing me more and more. I used to be called dear, but nowadays she just calls me hey or airhead. In spite of this, I attempted to adjust to our challenging present circumstances because I used to care for her and depend on her. But when I think back to her former self, I get depressed. Every day I discuss this with my husband, but he just advises me to do what his mother says and doesn't pay attention when I bring up her health problems. I film everything to make sure he can't say I didn't know. Things worsened when I had to put up with her ranting and unreasonable demands for the entire day until my mother-in-law called. She told me that Jessica was returning home to give birth, and she gave me instructions on how to look after her. Since I had never heard of Jessica's marriage or pregnancy, I was taken aback to hear that she was expecting. My mother-in-law screamed at me when I confronted her about it, asking, Do you have a problem with what I said? Her tone made it clear to me that she saw me just as Jessica's caregiver and servant. To avoid bothering her more, I chose to stop the call by simply agreeing. There were stacks of cardboard boxes at the door when I came home after going to get dinner items. Mom, Auntie says she's going to live here and that I have to give up my room for her, my kid said as he raced up to me. My daughter also came up to me, complaining that her brother would have to share a room and that there would only be room for one desk. I walked into the living room to make things clear with my mother-in-law. I spoke with my mother-in-law about the veracity of the children's claims. She left me swiftly, telling me to make Jessica's dinner, which would be steak, and to shift Owen's possessions to another room. The news of Jessica's homecoming, the state of the kids' rooms, and the unexpected supper request caught me off guard. Tiana, you have no right to complain. Jessica said to me at that point. You are only an intruder. Why are you acting so arrogant? Simply follow mommy's instructions and look after her. The kids were afraid of her angry comments, so they ran behind me for cover. I led them to their room and told them I would talk to my husband about everything. When Jessica arrived, the kids asked when she would depart, expressing their anxiety and uneasiness. They clung to me while I made dinner clearly nervous. I couldn't wait to tell my husband about Jessica's homecoming over the phone when he came home. He was taken aback as he had also not heard of it. After outlining the circumstances, he informed me that Jessica's request was understandable and that his mother had requested that the steak be cooked and one of the kids' rooms should be cleared. He rejected my worries about the size of the room and suggested that I should personally explain the issue to the kids. Desperate, I turned to my kids for comfort, and they told me we simply had to wait for Jessica to go. Their encouragement made me feel good, 
and I assured them that we would restore the room to its previous condition once Jessica gave birth. I apologized for putting them through this, and the kids, who had been nervous, grinned and asked me to hurry and make supper so Jessica wouldn't be upset. Jessica sat at the kitchen table, watching her brother's wife, Tiana, bustle around the stove. The aroma of roasted chicken and freshly baked bread filled the air, but Jessica's nose wrinkled as she observed Tiana's methods. Is that how you season the chicken? Jessica asked, her tone dripping with skepticism. Tiana turned with a smile. I like to keep it simple. A bit of salt, pepper, and some herbs from the garden. Jessica pursed her lips. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's one way to do it. I always learned that a good marinade makes all the difference. But if you like it plain, I guess that's your choice. Tiana's smile faltered slightly, but she kept her voice light. Everyone has their preferences. As Tiana turned back to the stove, Jessica's gaze shifted to the living room. Dust motes danced in the sunlight streaming through the window, and a small pile of laundry sat folded on the couch. Jessica's eyes narrowed. Tiana, don't you think the house could use a bit more... attention? Jessica asked a hint of judgment in her voice. Tiana paused, glancing over her shoulder. What do you mean? I mean, there's dust on the shelves and the laundry's still sitting out. When I visit, I can't help but notice that things aren't as tidy as they could be, Jessica said, her tone sharp. Tiana swallowed, feeling a sting at Jessica's words, but trying to keep her composure. I do my best to keep up with everything, but with two young kids and a full-time job, it's a bit of a balancing act. Jessica sighed, shaking her head. I get that you're busy, but a little more effort wouldn't hurt. When I come over, I expect to see a clean house and food that's been given some real thought. It's not that hard to manage, Tiana. Tiana turned off the stove, her hands trembling slightly as she set the food on the counter. She'd been holding back her feelings for weeks, trying to be polite, trying to keep the peace but Jessica's constant criticisms were wearing her down. Jessica, Tiana said quietly, turning to face her sister-in-law. I understand you have your way of doing things, but this is my home. I work hard to make it a place where my family feels loved and cared for. Maybe it doesn't meet your standards, but it's not for lack of trying. Jessica blinked, taken aback by Tiana's firm tone. She opened her mouth to respond, but Tiana continued. I've been doing my best to juggle everything, work, the kids, the house, while still trying to make time for myself and my husband. I know it's not perfect, but perfection isn't what makes a home. It's the effort and the love that goes into it. Maybe instead of criticizing, you could offer to help, or at least try to understand what it's like. I mean, whatever. You don't tell me what to do, okay? I need to eat for two, so you better put in effort, Jessica said, and went to her room. In the kitchen, I began thawing the steak by pulling the meat from the freezer. Not too long afterward, my hubby joyfully returned home with a box of cake. The children emerged from their rooms as dinner time drew near, excited to see the dessert. After telling the kids we'd enjoy the cake after dinner, I imagined my husband had purchased it as an act of atonement for any difficulty he may have caused. Nevertheless, I was wrong. My spouse stated, Actually, the cake was for Jessica and Mom, with a casual tone. Why did you not also get one for the kids? I inquired. He answered, Don't ask obvious questions. You made Mom and Jessica feel bad, so I bought it. My spouse ignored my daughter's protests that they hadn't done anything wrong as she began to cry and gave the cake to his sister while holding my weeping kid. In an attempt to divert the conversation, I wished Jessica a happy pregnancy and inquired about the expected birth date. Thanking me, Jessica stated it will happen in October. 
Her stomach wasn't showing yet, so I was astonished to learn that she was only three months pregnant and was planning to give birth at home. Then my mother-in-law inquired, What kind of partner do you have, and when are you getting married? Jessica blurted out in a panic, Oh, my partner? He can't come over since he is now very busy as the president of a firm. However, he believes it would be safer for me to remain at my parents' place since he is worried about my health. I wondered if Jessica was telling the truth. I began to wonder if the marriage and the pregnancy were fake because of her hurried response. I made the decision to contact Jessica's residence and place of employment the next day, determined to learn the truth. I informed my mother-in-law that I would be leaving the house for a little after completing my daily tasks of taking care of her and saying goodbye to my husband and children. I went to Jessica's old flat first. I went up to the janitor who happened to be working in front of her door. Are you aware of any Jessica Robert who may have resided in this room? I inquired. He said, Are you acquainted with Miss Robert? Yes, I answered. I came to check on her because I've been trying to get through to her but couldn't. The janitor seems to accept my story. To be honest, I haven't been able to get in touch with Miss Robert either. She's been overdue on her rent for six months, and I've been afraid she could have passed out. He said, I was going to unlock the door, and asked if I could double check. I instantly agreed. Taking the key from the janitor who was clearly nervous, I remarked, It would be awful if she had fallen. I'll enter first. Please open the door and follow me. Postcards and envelopes with the label Urgent Notice littered the foyer. Jessica, are you there? I yelled loudly as I entered the house. Who are you? Yelled a guy seated on the sofa as I pushed farther inside, shocked by our unexpected presence. He went on. I'm calling the police. And grabbed his phone. I am the building janitor. The janitor clarified. We went into the room out of fear that Miss Robert could have passed out there because we were unable to contact her. This apartment is for single occupancy, he said. However, who are you? We may have to report you to the police. The man sat down and introduced himself, appearing embarrassed. Jake is my name. Me and Miss Robert are dating, Jake clarified. He said that because her brother was about to file for divorce, Jessica had requested him to stay here until my family and I moved out. Jessica had been planning to get my husband to file for divorce and get us kicked out of the house. Startled by this realization, I found it difficult to remain calm and maintain my composure. I know Jessica from somewhere, I murmured. I couldn't get through to her, which frightened me. She told me she was expecting. Is the kid really yours? With a startled expression, Jake said, Pregnant. Despite being married, he had an affair with Jessica, and the discovery of the affair by his ex-wife precipitated their divorce. Jake had to step down from his position as a potential successor to his father-in-law as president of the firm because of the divorce. After losing everything, he was depending on Jessica's kindness. Jake indicated that considering the pain the divorce had caused his son, he had no intention of having another child with Jessica. He did, however, disclose having a son from his first marriage. He acknowledged that he felt bad about what he had done, and that he couldn't stop thinking about his old family when he was living with Jessica. He cried, and I couldn't help but wonder why he was disclosing so intimate information to complete strangers. Jake said he needed to confide in someone since he had been struggling for a while. The janitor recommended Jake to reevaluate his connection with his old family implying that staying with Jessica could be insulting to her. Jake made the decision to call someone after giving it some thought, presumably his ex-wife. He asked for a chance to show that he had changed, said he was sorry for his sins, and pledged to live a life that would make her and his kid proud. Jake apologized to us for his previous actions after the call ended. He made the decision to live on his own, and strive to be a parent his kid would be proud of. When everything was said and done, he thanked us for helping him see well, 
put his stuff in a bag, and departed the room. The janitor regretted not asking Jake to get in touch with Jessica's guarantor for the rental agreement after he departed. The janitor informed me that Jessica's brother was the guarantor when I inquired who it was. I advised getting in touch with the guarantor and left for home. My mother-in-law was consoling a sobbing Jessica when I returned. I walked to my bedroom to change, acting as though I didn't know anything. Then, without knocking, Jessica came into my room and asked if I could use my phone to call her boyfriend because hers was blocked and he wasn't returning her calls. My refusal to provide my phone to a stranger caused Jessica to become resentful of me later on. With fury in her eyes, Jessica clicked her tongue and followed my mother-in-law into the living room. Jessica, is it true that you're behind on rent and that there was a man living in your apartment? My mother-in-law asked her. Is he your partner in life? Jessica became quite enraged and said, Yes. He departed to start over alone after deciding to go back to his original family, but I came back here intending to create a married life with him. She yelled, then started weeping once again. After getting changed, I heard Jessica mention, I can't get through to him and I need your help but I had turned her down. Jessica was furious that I was being unkind and keeping them from communicating. She had a childlike outburst and called me a parasite. My expectation was that Jessica's mother would correct her remarks, but that did not transpire. I also felt that Jessica was too arrogant and didn't know her role as a daughter-in-law, even if she was an outsider. Despite my best attempts to live up to her expectations, my mother-in-law undermined all hope I had for a peaceful relationship. So, Jessica, you're going to move in here with him? You and your kids need to move out, Jessica said. I'd given so much of myself to my mother-in-law, putting her wants before my kids, and putting up with insults and mistreatment in the hopes of reliving our fun moments together. But I was really upset when I learned those times were over. My mother-in-law and Jessica started attacking as soon as I walked into the living room. I've heard you turn down Jessica's request, my mother-in-law yelled. You are parasites, and you have no right to refuse. Didn't I tell you that? You didn't go, so he became irate and departed. Recalling my conversation with Jake, I reasoned that he departed because he valued his family from his birth. It wasn't my fault that Jessica was upset since he preferred his own family to hers. You should call him and say Jessica's crying or ask him to come back to her, Jessica said, acting naively. Her innocent proposal and my mother-in-law's approval drove me to the breaking point. Let's do it if that is your thought. I responded. Please give me his phone number. I dialed the number on speakerphone, which Jessica had given me. I personally communicated Jessica's message to Jake when he responded. I told Jake, Jessica is very upset since you broke up. Please return to her. She is crying. I don't know who you are, but I've ended things with Jessica, Jake retorted. I adore my birth family. I just had a brief relationship with Jessica, and now all I can think about is remorse. When Jessica heard this, she lost her temper and reached for the phone. Jake, what about the child in my stomach? She questioned. You must marry me and accept responsibility for me. In response, Jake said, You had terrible menstruation pain, so I purchased you medication and sanitary items not too long ago. That was not the type of connection I had with you following the shock of my divorce. After hearing Jake's answer, Jessica became quiet. After saying sorry, he hung up. This wasn't what I had thought it would show. That Jake left Jessica to go back to his own family. Not because of me. Jessica angrily said, Just because it's none of your business doesn't mean you didn't speak passionately enough. As soon as the phone ended. He could have returned if you had. She bellowed, It's your fault he left. Jessica, an adult of 35, 
felt as though her allegations sprang from a child's fight. I was in disbelief. Then my mother-in-law said, That's correct, you are to blame for everything. Without a doubt you are a parasite. Get out of this house right now. Understood. I shot back and started packing. When the kids got home from school that evening, I informed them that I was divorcing their father and leaving the house. My oldest son considered for a little while before grinning and responding, that would be best. With a grin, my daughter told me that Grandma and Aunt were scared and she wanted to go. She had no worries whatsoever about her father. I questioned the kids about how they would do in the absence of their dad. It's okay. Dad was never on our side or mom's, my son retorted. Are we going to live with your family, just the three of us, inquired my daughter. My spouse returned home just after I finished packing. After hearing his mother and sister's story, he rushed into the room without saying hello. Hey, you irritated Jessica and mom. I told you to simply listen to my mother, didn't I? He said it again his customary phrase. I understand. That's why I'm leaving this house, I retorted. Please sign these divorce documents as well. I placed the papers in front of him while giving him a scowl. He signed the documents with ease and inquired, Where will the three parasites go now? He went back to the living room saying, Even if you divorce, a jobless parasite like you can't support two kids, can you? I immediately gave my brother a call to ask if he could assist us with the transfer the next morning by bringing a vehicle. I had previously told him about Jessica's unexpected arrival and talked to him about the actions of my mother-in-law and husband. The phone call was short since my brother had briefed my parents and they had recommended me to move forward with the divorce. My brother gave me advice and encouragement. Tiana, you've done a great job thus far. My brother added, Don't blame yourself, which gave me a small sense of relief. My brother and his associates came the next day with a truck and assisted us in swiftly moving our possessions. I begged Jessica to look after her mother, and she hardly responded, watching the procedure with her arms crossed. Without a word, she walked into the home. Next next to my parents' property, in a family-friendly building owned by my father, was where we found our new home. There was a vacancy, so we could rent it for a reasonable price. My husband's family had labeled me a parasite on several occasions, so I didn't want to intrude, even if my parents had recommended living together. The new abode had the kids giddy with excitement. They cheerfully assisted with unloading after swiftly selecting their own rooms. For me, their laughing was a soothing experience. My phone then started ringing. My former spouse was calling and sounded agitated. Mom is having problems. Please hurry. She's begging for someone to clean up her mess. What makes my attendance necessary? I answered nonchalantly. You should, of course, he urged. My mother told you to do it. The entire home smells, so move quickly. I informed him that we were currently going through a divorce. You know, I'm a total stranger now, I said, a little amused. After I've taken care of three parasites for so long, you can't even do this much, he said, losing all control of his temper. He might call me a parasite too, but I could take it no more when he brought the kids in. Were you aware that your mom suffers from dementia? I've told you about the hospital's diagnosis several times, but you likely ignored me. I even have a video to prove it. At your house, where you refer to my beloved children as parasites, I would never attend. Consider it an air freshener and learn to live with it as it is the scent of your cherished mother. I opened out completely, shocking my ex-husband with my abrupt shift in attitude. He was startled into quietness. I said, your mother is rated as needing level 2 care, which means she needs assistance all the time. Good luck, but it's tough. I blocked his phone and hung up. Next, Jessica called, 
demanding that I come straight away and clean up, but I hung up and blocked her number as well. My ex-husband sent a letter to my parents' home two weeks later. It went into depth about his family's sad circumstances since I left. My mother-in-law's dementia had gotten worse since she had no one to bully her. Claiming to be pregnant and hoping to give birth there, Jessica had come back home. But her true motivation was just to live comfortably. My former partner accused Jessica of neglecting his mother, which resulted in many disagreements between them. They continued to provide care at home, after looking for a care facility, but finding only pricey choices they couldn't afford. Jessica had wanted to return to her old apartment, but she was forced to continue providing care grudgingly, since my ex had broken the contract and not paid the late rent. Paradoxically, my mother-in-law never stops referring to me as the slave, even if she occasionally forgets who Jessica and my ex are. It felt like a joy to wake up to the morning sun shining through the window, a new beginning for the kids and myself. Currently, I work in a pharmacy, even though I have hospital experience and a license as a pharmacist. It's hard to reintegrate into society after a 10-year hiatus, but nothing compares to living with my ex's family. At their new school, the kids immediately established friends and settled into a routine that they liked. Above all, I'm thankful that our family can enjoy happy days together.